around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> That's the sound of the village school bell, bringing back memories of our childhood when we learned our ABCs. And that's a sound similar to the historic ringing of the Liberty Bell in 1776. It serves to remind us of the vital part we play today in our nation's government. Be an informed American. Know the ABCs of your government. Under the letter L in the Dictionary of U.S. Government Terms, is the word lobby. A lobby is an organized group which seeks to influence legislators for passage or defeat of a bill. The First Amendment to the Constitution guarantees all citizens the right to petition for or against government decisions. Years ago, people with special favors to ask would stop congressmen in the Capitol lobbies to talk to them. Soon they became known in political slang as lobbyists. There are lobbies for and against everything. There are lobbies for low tariffs, lobbies for high tariffs, lobbies for federal aid to education, lobbies against federal aid to education, lobbies for rigid farm price supports, lobbies for flexible supports. Lobbies have been referred to as the third house of Congress, which works behind the scenes. Keep the spirit of the Liberty Bell ringing. Be an informed American. Know the ABCs of our nation's government in action. You know, Mr. Dillon, I sure would feel a lot safer if we had Brad Kyler locked up there in jail like his brother. Yeah, so would I, Chester. You'd think if he was around town, somebody would have saw him. Maybe he doesn't want to be seen. A mighty upsetting feeling not knowing if any minute you might get a bullet in the back. And that's probably the way you'll try it, too, in the back. Now, let's take another look in the long branch. Huh? All right, sir. Hello, oh, Kitty. Kitty. Have you caught Brad Kyler yet, Matt? You haven't even found a trace of him, Kitty. <laughs> Seems to me you could make his brother talk. Not so far. You got him locked up in jail. Isn't that some way of forcing him? <laughs> Take an axe handle to him, do you mean? Oh, no. Come right down to it, Miss Kitty. I don't think even that is breaking down. Them collar boys is tougher than army mules. Brad and Ray's both. They're just a pair of cool-blooded killers. Sure they are, and proud of it. Ray sits over there in his cell, brags about the things they've done, admits all of it. He says he'll never stand trial, though, that Brad will get him out before then. Oh, he's just bluffing, Matt. No, Brad will make a try, at least. Matt. Oh, hello, Doc. Hey, Matt, if you want to stop a big fight, maybe a killing. No? Huh? You better move in on that poker game over in the corner. Uh, it looks peaceful enough to no, me. No, no, it isn't. It's crooked, Matt. I smelled it, so I pulled out just now. And some of the others are getting kind of itchy, too. I think Ben Stoddard's about to call a showdown. Uh, who's doing the cheating? But I figure it's that, uh, you see that old fellow over there by the wall? Yeah. With the fancy vest and the soles off his boots? Well, he's marked the deck somehow, the way it looks to me. You know who he is, don't you? No, I know. He's a stranger in town. Claims he's a big-time stage actor back east. But I think he's mostly hot air and bad whiskey. All right, mister. This has gone far enough. There it is, Matt. Yeah. You've been 
win an all. You fired regular to suit me, mister. I, I beg your pardon, my dear sir. Now don't high talk me, you fancy do. All right, then, all of you. Take it easy now. Now, what's the trouble? Now, this man's been cheating on us. That's the trouble. Sir, may I ask if you represent the law here? I'm the U.S. Marshal, yeah. Who are you? I, sir, have the distinction of being Edward Vanderman, a name with which you are no doubt familiar. No, I can't say that I am. Then may I inform you, Marshal, that I am the Edward Vanderman who has trod the boards for lo these many years before the crown heads of Europe, always to the wildest acclaim. That's very interesting. Twenty-three weeks as Hamlet at the Covent Garden Music Hall. Thirty-one weeks in the unforgettable role of Macbeth. All right, but what about this poker game? What a ridiculous accusation. I had the impression I was playing with gentlemen instead of these coughing, haggling creatures. Let me have him, Marshal. Just let me and the boys take him out back for just five minutes. How do you know he was cheating, Ben? He was cheating. We all know it. Look at these cards. Nick and Clip and Cornered, every one of them. He's been working over for the last hour. His luck's been getting better all the time. How about his table stakes there? Most of that's yours? Most all of it. He had only five dollars to start with. All right, then keep it and split it up however you figure. Come on, Vanderman. I, I beg your pardon, Come sir. Come on outside. Now move. Out this door. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, Vanderman, I'm going to make this short. We don't like card sharps and dodge. You get out of town tonight. Sir, I am not a card sharp. You were cheating, weren't you? I was... Well, yes, I was cheating. But it was out of desperation, sir. That and the drink on an empty stomach. Marshal, I, I can't get out of town. Oh, why not? Well, to put it quite simply, sir, I am broke. What? A matter of unfortunate investments, you might say. At any rate, Dodge City is the end of the line. I haven't a cent, and as you can see, I, 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 I'm I, not very well equipped for walking. When did you eat last? Oh, approximately 24 hours ago. All right. Chester, take him over to the jail and give him some of that stew that you made. Ooh. He can sleep on the cot tonight, and maybe we can figure out something in the morning for him, Okay, Mr. Oh, Marshal, you you have not only earned my undying gratitude, but I I promise I will never crimp another deck as long as I live. <laughs> Furthermore, you, you may call me Edward. All right, Edward. But uh, you should save your gratitude until you taste that stew at Chester's. Times have changed, and so has the man. In the year 1775, a patriotic, enterprising American by the name of David Bushnell invented a strange craft. It was constructed of two oak beams resembling two platters clapped together and propelled by a water screw attached to a hand-operated crank. Another water screw regulated the depth to which the craft could descend. This was the American turtle, the first... United States submarine. 179 years later, 1954, the United States came up with another first. This time, however, it was a 3,000-ton, $55 million vessel powered by an atomic reactor. It was the Nautilus, the world's first atom-powered submarine. And where the American Turtle was a one-man operation dependent on courage and brawn, the Nautilus is a complicated network of advanced electronics, the operation of which is dependent upon a team of highly trained, skilled Navy men who know their jobs and do them well. Yes, times have changed, and so has the man. Marshal, you've gone clean out of your mind. You think so, Joe? 
Instead of running that old fellow out of town, you stand here and ask me to give him a job. Now, Joe, you need a waiter. You said so yesterday. And where else are you going to find one who can fill in his cook if you want to take a morning off now and then? How do I know he can cook? Well, he says he can. Try him out. Well, what have you got to lose? My restaurant, maybe. If he was to take a notion to sell it while my back was turned. Oh, don't you worry about that, Joe. Nobody'd buy it once they got to look at all them cockroaches. I got no more cockroaches than anybody else in Dodge. Yeah, but yours is bigger. That's because the food here is better. <laughs> well, what do you say, Joe? Edward's waiting outside. You want to give him a try? I can't figure what you're up to, Marshal. Spending time trying to get some stranger a job ain't got much to do with law enforcement. Well, it might have in the long run. He was broke and desperate. That's why he cheated in that card game. And he's still broke and desperate. Now, how about it, Joe? All right, Marshal. Call him in. Thanks, Joe. Edward, come on in. Hey, Joe, you just don't get in no card games with him. Why, that fellow can get from the bottom of the deck. This is Joe Carpy, your new boss. Mr. Carpy? It's a dollar a day in grub and you can sleep on a cot in a storeroom. Uh, you, sir, are overwhelming in your generosity. You can start out washing them dishes there. Very well. Unaccustomed as I am to exercising my unique talents in a scullery, I nonetheless approach the task at hand with a high heart and doughty courage. Where's the soap? Does he always talk this way? Yeah, mostly. Uh, come on, Chester. Thanks again, Joe. Uh, just one thing, Marshal. Behind this mask of frivolity, I am eternally grateful to you. Uh, forget it, Edward. Your, your trust, sir, is not misplaced. I will not disappoint you. I'll drop by the jail when you get a chance, huh? Let's go, Chester. Come, come, my good man. The salt. Where's the salt? What's the matter, Chester? You don't look too happy. Aren't you glad he got the job? Well, yes, sir, but I just suddenly remembered Brad Kyler. You ain't forgot about him, have you? Chester, when a man like Kyler's gunning for you, you, you don't forget it too easy. We got the tray all fixed, Mr. Jones. We can take it back to him whenever you're ready. All right, Chester, let's get it over with. I swear it sure ain't much pleasure to fix supper for somebody that don't appreciate it. And a race color wouldn't appreciate anything with it. Still don't have to be so mean about it. Yeah, being mean is what got him in jail in the first place. Grace, here's your supper. What is it? That same slop you've been bringing every night? There. Whatever it is, it's what you get. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. It'd make you too happy if I was to starve. All right, get back away from the cell door. All right, Chester, set it inside. Yes, sir. I can smell that stuff clear over here. Well, go ahead. Tomorrow night, I'm going to cook you grip. Tomorrow night, I may not be here. All right, Chester. Come on. You'll be here, Race, until the day you stand trial. Maybe my brother will have something to say about that. No? Well, he's had plenty of time to say it. What's keeping him? He'll be here. Don't worry. Before we leave town, we're going to get you, Marshal. You do that, Race. Come on, Chester. You can find out. You just wait. I declare that's the honest human being I ever seen. Yeah. Marshal? Huh? Hey, come on in. Uh, what's the matter, Joe? Marshal, I ought to make you pay the loss yourself. What are you talking about? That gull down card sharp you got me to take on, he's gone. What? He took every cent out of the till along with him. Lord knows where he is by now. Uh, I got a pretty good idea where he is, Joe. And I wish I didn't. Here, Matt. Whooping it up down there by the end of the bar. I see him. 
He had had a few drinks before I came in, and he's had more since. But where'd he get the money, Matt? Stole it. Huh? From Joe Carty. And, no. After you got him the job... Well, I should have known better, I guess, but I hate to see a man down and out push against a wall. I'm sorry, Matt. Well, I'll see you later. No. A toast, gentlemen. A toast to the royal blood of the house of Barleycorn. <laughs> All right, boys. All right. I'm sorry. Edward, the party's over. Oh, dear me. The sheriff of Nottingham. Yes, indeed. Come on, let's go. No, no, wait, Marshal. This is merely a natural misunderstanding which I can explain quite easily if you will only permit me. Don't bother. But I feel it's the least I can do under the circumstances. Only one moment, Marshal, if you will listen to me. All right, let's hear it. I I accepted my menial role this morning with proper humility, Marshal. And throughout the long day, I labor diligently, conscientiously, gratefully, lovely. Then, as even tide drew nigh, in Master Copy's cupboard, I found a bottle. So? so? I looked, I sniffed, I tasted, I imbibed. And morality and ethics were flung to the winds. As I warn you, drink is my weakness. On an empty stomach, so you said. Yeah. Well, I, I, I neglected to add that a precisely similar effect occurs on a full stomach. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Marshal. Come on, let's go. No, no, wait, wait. I was quite sincere this morning when I promised not to fail your trust, Marshal. Nonetheless, I did fail it. There is no excuse, of course. I suppose that I, I really should face the fact that I am just a bit on the worthless side. I'm inclined to agree with you, Edward. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Just a few minutes ago, Mr. Dillon, three different people seen him down by the depot. Who? Brad Tyler. He's here, all right. This is Dick Sinclair. You know, a great deal of publicity has been given lately to NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. For over eight years, this alliance of the free world has been protecting the peoples of its 15 member nations from Soviet aggression. Its reason for being echoes the words of Woodrow Wilson back in 1917. Quote, Our object now is to vindicate the principles of peace and justice in the life of the world as against selfish and autocratic power and to set up among the really free and self-governed peoples of the world such a concert of purpose and of action as will henceforth ensure the observance of these principles, unquote. No matter how you describe the work of NATO, just remember, it's guarding your freedom. find any place to loaf except in front of the jail? Well, with you and Brad Kyler on the prowl for each other, I figure I might as well just wait right here until one of you need it. Now you're wasting your time, Doc. I can't find a hide or hair of him. He's here in town somewhere. Folks have seen him. And I'm not one of them, though. Come on in. Uh, Chester! <laughs> Has he got it locked? Yeah, I guess so. Chester! Who is it? It's me, Chester. Open up. Oh. All right. Just a minute. Hello, Doc. Yeah, Chester. Sure am glad to see you, Mr. Dillon. I've been sitting here at this rifle and jumping out of my skin every time an owl hooted. <laughs> there are no owls this time of year, Chester. Well, I know that, Doc. It's just kind of a... Well, it's... I'm Brad Collier, Mr. Dillon. No, not a sign of him, Chester. Ray Collier's been yelling for the last 15 minutes. He wants to see you when you come in. No. 
Man, poor old actor fella ain't had much to say. He just sits there in his cell, looks at the floor. I think he's feeling real remorseful for letting you down. Well, he should have thought of that before he stole the money. That's right, I know, but I still think it's bothering him considerable. Yes, sir! Oh, Bear Race yelling again. All right, I'll go see what he wants. Uh, boil up some coffee, will you, Chester? Chester, yes, it won't take a minute. I got some water already. That's you, Chester? No, it's not Chester. Yeah. You finally got back. What do you want, Race? You didn't run into my brother, did you? If I had, he'd be in that cell with you right now. Marshal! Yeah, what? Is Never it? mind him. I got a little business with you myself. No, Marshal, he's got a gun under that you blanket. Keep your mouth shut. Drop the gun, Ray. All right, ladies. You all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I'm all right, Chester. Get the cell keys. Yes, sir. Uh, take it easy, Edward. His, his brother came outside, threw the gun in, through the cell window a little while ago. Uh, don't try to talk, Edward. Which one first, Matt? Uh, never mind, Race. I had to kill him. Here, let me get the cell. Marshal? Yeah, I'm right here, Edward. All right, Doc, see what you can do for him. Race, Race planned to shoot you. Said he'd kill me if I'd warn you. Yeah, but you did warn me, Edward. It's no use, man. His, his brother is waiting. Two horses, north end of River Bridge. I'll, I'll get him. You trusted me, Marshal. Nobody has for a long time. Funny, never much good at living, but on stage. I was always very good at dying. Death scenes, they were, they were always my best. Edward. That's it, man. Uh, he knew race had shoot him, but he still warned me. I don't know, Doc. Maybe he was worthless, but like he said, he was pretty good at dying. and directed by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, James Westerfield, and James Nusser. Farley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitter. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.